It's been quite a voyage, but we're finally coming in for a landing on Planet Mix. There's our instance of Aria for this project. We have 16 instruments, some are sharing a MIDI channel, some have their own. We could export the music right now, but since we're using a recording program, let's use more of its tools. Sonar's mixer, the master track. Here's a good start for equalization on a mix down, rolling off some of the bass frequencies that can build up, a notch down on 250, a little lift in the higher regions. In the master's effects bin, we're putting in a compressor from Cakewalk Sonar. Starting with this mix compression preset, I found a setting I liked, nothing too drastic. On the audio track connected with Aria, I'm using Sonar's channel tools. The increased width preset gives a nice expansion to the sound. I'm narrowing the preset just a little. This is one of Cakewalk's most useful plugins. I'm also using this spectrum analyzer to make some equalization decisions. You'll see it in action during the playback. So we've recorded MIDI controllers on all the tracks, we've tweaked the velocities, now let's listen to the whole thing before we mix it down. In the piano roll view, we'll look at all of the tracks at the same time. Back at the track view, let's zoom so we can see the whole project at once. Remember that all of the sounds are coming out of that first track, the one stereo pair we're using. Highlight everything, everything is selected. File, export, audio, type in the name, and check the settings. We're exporting as a master file, a WAV file, not an MP3. We can turn dithering off, that's for when you're lowering the bit depth, but we're staying with the bit depth of 32. Everything looks good, push export. And there we go. That's the easiest way to export from Aria. We have landed on Planet Mix. But there's more to come, so stay tuned. It's helpful to have a dedicated audio editor to improve your mixdowns. Audacity is a free, cross-platform sound editor. It's open source software for recording and editing sounds. Let's look at a few things we can do with it. First, let's import the project file. We're given the choice to edit a copy of the file or edit the original file. It's best to make a copy. We have two beats of silence at the beginning of the project. It's easy to select that area and then push delete on the computer keyboard and it's gone. At the end of the project, there's also some silence that we should cut out. Again, we make a selection and delete it. We want to make sure we don't cut off the reverb tail. Let's take a look at Audacity's good envelope tool. Let's say we want to reduce the volume of that big swell before the B section. This isn't necessarily desirable, we're just looking at a demonstration of how the tool works. The visual feedback is perfect for getting an idea of what this volume reduction will sound like. There, you can see that the volume is now more constant. Using the selection tool again, let's select everything before the loud final section. In the effect menu, we find normalize, and I have it set so that everything will go up to just under full volume. Let's use that envelope tool again on the louder section at the end, so there isn't quite as huge of a difference between it and the previous sections. 
Now we're selecting the entire track and using this compressor. The default setting is pretty good. And there you can hear the results of that volume taming we did. Here's another very useful tool. We zoom in until we can see the individual samples. Then with the pencil tool we can redraw the volume. If you have clicks or pops in your track, this is the perfect way to smooth those glitches out. So those are a few things you can do with a dedicated audio editor like Audacity. When you're done, you'll want to export as a new version of your two-track master. You can also export the compressed MP3 version. You want to fill in this information. It's displayed when someone plays the MP3 in their media player. When you make an MP3 for the first time in Audacity, you'll get this menu to help you set up the lame encoder. Click the convenient download button, and you'll be taken to the page online that explains everything you need to know about setting up the MP3 encoder for Audacity. You can also make an MP3 in Sonar. I'm setting up a dummy project with a nonsense name because the project doesn't need to be kept. We import the edited two-track master. That's easily found because we keep everything associated with this project in one folder. Zoom horizontally so we can see the entire track, and then select it. We use the same menu that we used earlier to export the master, only this time we choose MP3. We change the bit depth because MP3s can't have a bit depth of 32. So in this case we do leave the dithering on. That helps the sound quality when reducing the bit depth. The default bit rate is 128. Never use that. Use the highest, 320. Also move that quality slider to better. Check encode ID3 info. Type in the title. Your name will come up automatically. Put in the year, and it's nice to choose a genre. Like I said earlier, this information comes up when someone plays your MP3. Click OK, and in no time you'll have an MP3 to share online. Just remember, this does not replace your master. And remember, the MP3, the WAV file, the project files, everything should be in one labeled folder. Don't go away, there's still more. Now we're going to look at a more advanced way of mixing an instant orchestra project. Up to this point, we had all of the instruments in ARIA coming out of one stereo pair. Clicking here, we can change the outputs for each of the instruments. The labels have two numbers because they each have a left and a right side. Now we need audio tracks and sonar to match up with ARIA's 16 audio outs. Right click and ask for 15 more audio tracks, and we don't need any more MIDI tracks. Click OK and those tracks will appear at the bottom of the project. Let's go back to the top and drag down that one track we've been using so far. Next, we need to label these tracks so they match up with the names of the instruments in ARIA. This will help keep things organized as we go on. Abbreviations are fine as long as we know what is what. When we first inserted ARIA, we could have made things easier for ourselves. Here in the Insert menu, we could have asked for all of these audio tracks to be inserted in the first place. The tracks would have appeared already connected to ARIA. We'll cancel this because we're already set up. Let's take a look at the track we've been using so far. The input is ARIA's first audio out. So now we need to go down the line and assign the appropriate inputs from ARIA. Notice the outputs are all assigned to the master bus. When all of that's done, we need to select all of the MIDI tracks and their associated audio tracks. Click the header of track 1, hold shift, and select the last one. Everything's selected. Now we're going to bounce to tracks. You can see all of those audio tracks are listed. The default setting is for the entire mix. And in that case, your audio interface is listed. But we want all of the tracks, individual tracks, for each of these instruments. Fast Bounce works well with ARIA, so in a very short time we'll have all of those MIDI tracks rendered to audio. And there they are at the bottom of the project. It takes a little while for the waveforms to be drawn in for us. You can see those appearing right there. With those MIDI tracks and associated audio tracks still selected, click Tracks and ask to mute and archive them. As you can see, each one will have M and A highlighted showing that they've been muted and archived. Click M for the Track Manager, or use its icon in the toolbar. Use the spacebar to uncheck those, and all of those tracks will disappear, cleaning up the workspace. Longer names have been given to these tracks, and we need to simplify that. Just type in the shorter names. Muting and archiving is saving our computer resources. 
Turning ARIA off will save more. Click this, and the parentheses indicate it's disconnected. Now in the mixer, Sonar's console view, click here to narrow the tracks so we can see them all. I inserted a reverb bus by right-clicking, and then in the effects bin, I've inserted the free version of Reverberate, a convolution plugin. Now we'll right-click in these channel strips and activate the sends. I'm soloing the trumpet track to demonstrate. Setting up different amounts of reverb for each instrument is one of the juggling acts of mixing. Right-clicking in this area will get sends on every track and then just set up some preliminary levels. Using the faders on my controller keyboard, I pull all the faders down so we can start from scratch. One by one, we solo the instruments and start finding some levels. Here I'm trying to balance the big drums with the more delicate harp. We need to keep all of the faders well below the top, otherwise we'll start overloading, getting in the red. Zooming in, let's take a look at one of the advantages of working with audio instead of MIDI at this point. Visual feedback of seeing those peaks and valleys is very helpful. I'm recording some volume automation, watching the screen for guidance. Maybe I'll find a note that I would like to have louder, plainly visible. So all I need to do is add nodes and then boost the volume at that point. We can grab whole sections of the envelope and move them up, but this time with the visual aid of seeing the waveform. Once all the editing is done, exporting is exactly the same as shown earlier in this video. The Garretton Instant Orchestra. So many instruments, so little time. What makes Instant Orchestra instant is this long list of lush, layered sound. What you do with it is up to you. Thanks for watching. It's been a blast.